Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, let's go over using Vim's built-in complete menu. And by the end of this video, you'll have Vim configured so that you can just start typing into any buffer and it's going to automatically pop open this complete menu and then try to offer suggestions based on words that it found in the current file, as well as other buffers that you have open in the background. If you've ever used Sublime Text or VS Code in the past, it's very, very similar to how that works. And I've only been using Vim now for about 10 months. And this feature was something that I really, really missed from Sublime Text, but I just didn't know how to configure it properly. So now that I've been using it for a while, I have all the configuration set up. I figured now's a good time to make a video about this so I don't forget. Uh, it's also all up on my dot files, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. But yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. I mean, you can just be typing whatever and it just starts to autocomplete things based on your typing. And then you can just hit enter to complete it. Or if you know, when you have multiple items in the list, you can just continue typing. Like if I want this one here and uh, yeah, it'll just pick the longest one by default. Then you just hit enter so to select it. Or, you know, you can just start typing and maybe something that has like multiple items here, like preferences, I guess. Like if you start going through this and you don't want it, you can just cancel that selection. And uh, what I'm finding is when I'm typing, you know, this thing is not getting in my way. It's actually helping me and it, and it feels really, really good. So it's not just limited to like YAML files here, like with this Ansible file, of course. You know, this will work with any setup that you have. So right here, I'm taking a look here at a Flask project right inside of a view. And in Flask and Rails and other things, just typing in something like current user is a popular thing. But now it's like, well, what if you want to like autocomplete something from like your user model and you kind of forgot what's going on there, right? You can just type in something like, ah, there's cool. There's like this canceled subscription thing here. Cool. If I type in that and just hit enter, like it autocompletes that. And it even tells me where that autocompletion came from. So this came from like the snake eyes folder in blueprints user models that pie. And uh, yeah, this is just absolutely awesome. So it's just enough autocomplete to be super useful without having to set up like a really complicated language server. So a couple of weeks ago, I uploaded a video about Vim snippets, right? You know, Vim snippets allow you to do something like def and hit tab. And, uh, you know, this autocomplete menu is kind of for completing code that you already have written, whereas snippets are for adding new code that you haven't written yet. So you can use both of these together to do some really, really nice stuff. Like for example, like over here, like if I just start typing in uh, this sentence above me, like the return one, like look how fast it just allows me to type this and I can continue just typing if I want and, or I can use the menu very naturally. And uh, you know, it doesn't just work because I have this line above me, you know, I have the words return and render template uh, all in all sorts of other places in the project. So yeah, very, very good stuff. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the vimrc file to make all of this work. And we'll start by taking a look at the only plugin that I have here related to this, which is this plug here, the autocomplete pop plug. And what this one does is as soon as you start typing, then the autocomplete menu pops up. If you don't like that behavior, all you have to do is remove this plug and it goes away. Uh, you, you'll still be able to invoke it using control P in insert mode. That's what I pressed just now. Now, if you're using FCF to do fuzzy matching on files, like for example, if you want to open up a file very quickly using fuzzy matching, you can still hit control P because this bind works in normal mode. Whereas the control P for the pop-up menu, notice how I'm in insert mode, you know, that only works in insert mode. So that's not going to conflict, which is uh, really nice. You know, that's what I was used to when I used sublime text and VS code. But uh, if you don't like that behavior, yeah, just turn it off. Now let's take a look here at some of the other options related to the complete menu. And we have complete and complete opt. Now, complete is pretty interesting because this basically controls, you know, where Vim is going to look to do the completions. You know, it looks in the current file, it looks in other buffers. You can always read the help menu to see what else you can select. But uh, one of them is K spell, and I find this one to be very, very, very useful. So check this out. Right now, I'm going to enable uh, spell check in Vim because it's turned off by default for uh, my setup. And if I just start typing, like what's a really hard word to spell? For me, it's something like inconceivable. It's like almost impossible for me to sell, uh, to spell. But if I just start typing here, notice that, you know, it's not trying to autocomplete based on what I'm typing when it comes to like pulling words from the K spell dictionary. But if I hit that control P in insert mode, then it does allow you to pick the item from the dictionary, which is uh, pretty handy. So the way it works, I mean, the reason I guess it doesn't pop up automatically when you're typing is that would be kind of annoying, right? If you're typing in like a markdown file and this thing just kept trying to autocomplete words based on you typing. Yeah, I don't know, that would annoy me as well, but I'm happy that it does exist because when I do need it, 
Uh, it's a little bit faster, I find, just to hit Control P and start typing the beginnings of a word and then find it in the list versus using something like terribly misspelling it and then uh, doing a spell check with like Z equals or whatever. Uh, yeah, very cool addition. But if you don't like that, of course, you can just delete this uh, setting from your VimRC and then it wouldn't even do anything when it comes to looking up words from the dictionary. Then we have complete opt. And for this one, it might be easier just to open up the help menu here, just so we can take a look at what this does. So when it comes to complete options, we have a couple of different things that we can set. We have menu, we have menu one, we have longest, there's preview, there's no insert, and there's no select. And if we take a look here at what we have up top, I have mine set to menu one and longest. Now, I went over these quite a bit uh, in practice on my own, and I found that these combined work quite nicely. Uh, you can always decide not to pick certain options, right? You can pick more than one, uh, it's up to you, but I find that these work the best. And the way menu one works is, uh, it kind of really requires understanding what menu does. So let's read off this one first, right? And we're not gonna spend too much time parroting docs back and forth, right? But it says the menu pops up basically when there's more than one match available. I don't know why it says sufficient colors, I'm not really sure what that means. But basically menu will mean that it'll pop up when you can cho choose more things, like more than one thing. But menu one also makes the menu pop up when there's only one match. For example, if you do something like the word set here, you can see there's many different items to uh, choose from here. We have more than one selection. But if I just start typing in something like, I don't know, uh, settings is a bad word, I guess, maybe like share or something. Yeah, like this one, like it still shows it when there's only one selection available. And this is actually very, very handy. And this is what menu one does. So right now in this current example, it's kind of silly because like typing D is probably going to be a lot easier than hitting enter to autocomplete. But you know, going back to something like the uh, Docker variables from the Ansible file that we looked at before, if you have like a very long variable name to complete, sometimes you know, like imagine if this was like, you know, shared folder in directory or something like that, right? Like that was the thing that you wanted to autocomplete. It would be way faster to hit enter to complete that. So that's why I like having menu one. I want to be able to complete things when there's only one item in the list. And then we have longest here. So longest says it inserts the longest common text of the matches. So basically what that means is, you know, if you have multiple matches and I guess one of them is longer than the other, then it is going to choose that one by default, like that'll be selected. And then you have some other ones here too, like no insert, but no insert says like, you know, don't insert any text for a match until you actually select it from the menu. But you can see here, you know, this doesn't work if you're using longest because longest will, you know, it'll try to select that one by default. So it, there's never no way not to insert something. So you can't use those together. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you can play with these if you want. Uh, I find that these two settings work uh, very, very nicely. And there is also one other setting. I think I actually forgot the name of it, but it started with an S. Yeah, there it is, short mess. So short mess when you add the C option here. So maybe, I don't even know, could I do this? So if I comment that out and I reload my Vim file, I have a bind for that. If I start control Ping here, well, no, I can just type something like this. Look at the look at my status menu where it says keyword completion like uh, NP match one of nineteen. That's pretty spammy. Like this this is like Vim giving you notifications about what item you selected from the menu, and I find this to be a little distracting. Like I don't want to see that status message. So when you set short mess plus equal C, and I reload my Vim file here, and I, I start doing this again, like typing set. Notice now the status bar it doesn't get updated with those keyword selections. Like it just ignores adding it there. So that's one setting you might wanna set. Uh, that one was a little bit tricky to track down. I looked for a number of places, I eventually figured it out and uh, there it is, happy to have it. So now we have some uh, key binds to make all of this work in a little bit more natural way. And I think it's like visible or something, one of these key binds, yeah, okay. So these uh, five key binds are the ones that I have set up. Now. You know, I came from Sublime Text. I came from, you know, Visual Basic 6 in 1997. You know, that autocomplete basically worked using one, the arrow keys to move a selection up or down. So, you know, if you're in an item like this, you know, I'm hitting the down arrow, up arrow, down arrow, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down to select the item in the list. Now, I can also hit the right arrow to, to complete that item. For example, you know, well, it's going to complete it when I'm selecting it, but... 
I guess the other example would be better would be if I didn't want this item to be complete, I can hit the left arrow and it's just going to cancel that selection and it puts me right into insert mode so I can continue typing like normal. You know, for me, that is very, very, very natural to use. Now, you might be thinking though, like arrow keys when you're typing, like who's going to hit right to complete the item? That would be crazy. So you can see I also have a second bind here that completes it on hitting enter. So if I just type in set here and uh, like local or whatever, like set L and I hit enter right now, enter completes it. Or, you know, if I do set L again, uh, right completes it as well. You know, again, that's because two separate binds here. Sometimes I find if I'm if I'm using this menu, right, and it's up like this and I have to go down like twice or whatever, it's easier for me to hit the right key to complete it than enter because, it, yeah, I mean, your fingers are already on the arrow keys. But if there's only one selection in the list, then it is much easier, in my opinion, to hit enter to complete it. Now, you might be thinking, geez, Nick, why not just bind tab? Because that's how Sublime Text and VS Code works and all other editors as well. And I'm with you, man, or gal. Uh, I just don't know how to get it to work. I tried very, very hard to get the tab binding to work. It's not as simple as just binding tab here and here and making it work. Uh, then it completes with uh, ulti snips because ulti snips also uses tab in insert mode to do uh, completion on, on the snippets. And you know, I Googled to the end of the universe and I just could not find a solution. So if you know how to make that work, please drop in a comment below and, and let us know. That would be fantastic. For now, enter works pretty okay. It's like 90% natural for me to hit that, but tab is really the one that I want. But I just, yeah, I couldn't find a plugin. I couldn't find anything to make it work. So I'm just dealing with uh, using these. Now, yeah, arrow keys, right? I'm just used to using them. I use them to move up and down once in a while. Uh, honestly, not that often, not because I use HJKL instead. I just, you know, do other things in Vim to not really need to go down like that. But, uh, you know, if you don't care about using the arrow keys and you want to use HJKL instead, you know, you can just change the down to be uh, the J key, right? And then up would be K, like whatever you want. You can change these if you'd like. So these are the default bindings, like, Basically, I'm not really sure how this works exactly. This was something I looked up in a in a Vim wiki post, but like control N and control P is how you typically would move down or up in this list and control Y would pick the item from the list and control E would basically escape it from the list. So that's what these are. But now we're just, you know, basically making our own mappings. But yeah, that's pretty much all the settings related to getting this to work. Uh, I'm really happy with this setup. I've been using it for full-time programming now for like about two weeks. It's up on my dot files. So you know, if you want to check it out here, all the VimRC stuff that we looked at is there. Also, uh, I did change my theme to be one dark. Previously, it was uh, Grovebox over here, but I did leave a you know a description on why I changed to one dark. So if you're keeping track of my dot files and uh, you always want to see like what's the current theme I'm using and you know why I switched to it, you can always read this if you'd like. And on that note, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps. And I will see you in the next video.